we have a football field a few meters high worth of spent nuclear fuel, right? Correct. Yes. How are these are, are these new advanced modular small modular reactors? Our good friends the SMRs are any of them going to be able to recycle that spent fuel? Some of them could. You know, I mentioned sodium cooled fast reactors earlier which have right. metal fuel and while TerraPower isn't currently planning to recycle in the United States, it is an amenable technology for the kinds of recycling that other nations do. France, for example, recycles a great deal of their spent nuclear fuel, resulting in lower volumes, lower masses, and much shorter lifetimes of long-term radioactivity by putting the longest-lived and most useful isotopes back in the reactor. Uh, we could do that, but in the United States, we don't currently have the infrastructure to do that. So it would take a real government effort to move forward on recycling. But, you know, when I was at DOE, this was definitely something that we were continuing to do research on. And there was a great deal of interest from the commercial side in seeing recycling be back on the table in terms of options. Molten salt reactors also were mentioned earlier. I should note, in the SMR, MSR universe, Molten salt reactors are also very amenable to recycling. I like the ASMR universe. And? Yeah, yes. How, <laughs> <laughs> how, how's your nuclear power doing? Yes. <laughs> Tell me about it. Yes. So are we still mining uranium? There's still plenty of uranium left in Earth's crust for this? Yeah, we are still mining uranium. Um, some of the best uranium in the world comes from mines in Canada, but... It exists in a lot of places, including the United States, Australia, Kazakhstan. How about Greenland? <laughs> oh, gosh, too soon. So, yeah, I think the reality is, unless you do a great deal of recycling, you're going to continue to mine uranium. So, yeah, recycling would reduce our need for new, fresh uranium. But isn't that part of the issue is the geopolitical concerns of this, right? The more we come up with this great technology and SMRs that, that feed these data centers. There's a lot of uranium out there, but they're not in every country. And some of these countries are borderline sort of friendly terrorists take over. Like, so how do you factor that in? And should some other simultaneous technology be developed as away from nuclear so energy so that we're not so dependent on, on uranium and the potential? Yeah, do you have a exposure? hotline to the State Department? You know, yeah, you but it basically would... comes down to not going back to reliant on one single. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's what it comes down to. Yeah, right. If, that's right. If, if there's a trouble in one sector, mm -hmm. right. you just shift the economics. You'll be. Re but if you have single point failure, everything is running if on you're oil. If trapped into fossil fuel, then there's a problem. Yeah. Right. The biggest bottleneck for that uranium fuel cycle is that you know the mining of uranium. There's lots of sources of it, but then the processing, conversion, and then enrichment of that fuel, where you increase the number of isotopes of uranium-235 per kilogram of total uranium, that enrichment process and the fuel fabrication process all happen at a at much smaller number of facilities internationally. And so, yeah, you know, quite quite to your point, international collaboration has been necessary to ensure that, you know, if Russia, who dominated historically conversion and enrichment capabilities in the last 20 years or so. If they decided not to sell to the United States, we needed to have more capabilities in the U.S. and among our allies, France, the U.K., etc. And so that has been underway. In fact, right behind me is the law where we banned Russia and uranium from uh, Russia, you know, imports in the near term so that we could protect some of our ability to invest in new enrichment capability. Catherine. If you have what's called spent uranium, mm -hmm. and that is basically waste product from fission, uranium fission, what does it mean to recycle it? You have to boost the isotope back or stick it in a, in a particle accelerator again? Because you have the uranium. How, how would you accomplish this? So there's two different ways, but basically the spent fuel that you start with is a mixture of uranium atoms and split fission products. So the two parts that the uranium atom splits into, this might be iodine and technetium, practically, you know, half of the isotopes in the periodic table uh, or in the chart of the nuclides. The mixture needs to be separated so that those fission products are removed from the total, the already split atoms. So I think the public is generally not familiar with the chart of the nucleotides. Uh, we all know the periodic table of elements, because that's that mysterious chart of boxes mm -hmm. that yep. sat in the front of your chemistry class. And the, the table of nucleotides, those were always in the more advanced chemistry classes. The one I didn't go to. Or the physics classes. And so that lists not just the elements, but all the isotopes 
possible for each of the elements? That's a more complicated diagram, correct? It is. It's quite a bit more complicated, and it's extremely useful for nuclear engineers because we end up producing a lot of those isotopes inside reactors during the fission process. Okay, so you can track their, their whereabouts. But can you make little cocktails to, to find which ones work better with each other to be able to take that forward? That's an interesting idea. You know, um, some of them fall into chemistry groups that can be useful for industrial applications and things like that. So one of the interesting possibilities for recycling, which I'll get to how you do it in a second, but one of the interesting possibilities for recycling is that some of those products that aren't useful in the reactor and are otherwise waste, some of those products are hard to generate otherwise, but can be useful for, you know, medical reasons, imaging, other kinds of radioactive you listed technetium as one of the byproducts, and I've seen that used in medical uh, imaging. So that's what you mean by possibly recycling some of this material. Absolutely. Technetium-99 metastable is routinely used for things like thyroid imaging and whatnot. Right, right. Cool. So it's picking through your dumpsters. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> that's right. A very specialized, high-precision uh, radioactive dumpster. Yeah, but how do you, you can't boost the uranium back into the isotope it needs to be? and then just run it? No, but generally speaking, what you end up doing is you take out those fission products and you still have a great deal of enriched material left. And during the fission process, you have been breeding a little bit of plutonium. Some of the uranium-238 atoms have absorbed a neutron and then another neutron, and they move their way up the chart of the nucleides into plutonium-239, which is also fissile. So you can put both the uranium and plutonium back into the reactor usefully, uh, along with some of the other transuranic elements, and that's recycling. You can do it with aqueous chemistry or electrochemistry. And that's no different from recycling plastics, or it's, they got to carry their weight with their waste products. That's right. That's right. Thank you.